And what is really going on, Crypto Savages? This is your host, C. Edward Kelso, Editor-in-Chief out at Coinspice.io. Back with another episode of the Coinspice Podcast, and this time around I have Amari Sachet. He is, of course, the lead developer out of Bitcoin ABC, which is the uh, major implementation for Bitcoin Cash, BCH. And he's probably best known as the founding father, at least a founding father of Bitcoin Cash, in the sense that he did a lot of the under the hood work to make BCH viable and bring it to life in 2017. And more recently, he had a chance to see his creation in the wild, like not just online and and not just in theory, but he trekked to Townsville, Australia uh, last month for almost a month of the day, actually, of our recording uh, to take part in the Bitcoin Cash City Conference there. It was the first of its kind for the country, but also the first time that Sushay had a chance to see his baby. Uh, the project he helped give birth to uh, being used by merchants in everyday uh, commerce from taxis to you know getting haircuts to having drinks and so on and I wanted to get his impressions <clears throat> wondering if it was it was you know kind of surreal and definitely it was but like the good engineer he is he immediately pivoted into why Townsville is so necessary and how it's uh, he believes it could uh, be a linchpin in how well kind of a key factor in how well Bitcoin Cash does going forward and I'll let him you know explain all that and and why he thinks uh, that's the case but it is a fascinating look inside of how he's thinking about things uh, how he goes about his work and why he's such a, a, an interesting voice for Bitcoin Cash. We join the conversation kind of midway through, and he's reflecting on uh, this particular conference for Bitcoin Cash uh, being uh, another first in the sense that um, it's the first since the major chain split back in late uh, 2018 uh, with all the drama there. And it's the first time that it's, it really is a more focused uh, drama-free conference where they're builders. And so he picks up there, and we actually start with his voice. So without any further ado, here is Amory Sachet. Because one, one of the things that was quite remarkable about that conference is how drama-free that was, and oh, everybody was driven to build their shit. Um, and one of the reasons is that most of the you know usual drama people were not there. And so I, I, I think there was a very positive event on that front because it allowed a core group of people to kind of meet each other and, and you know, be able to, to <laughs> be able to form a group of productive people, you know. And that goes to the, to the noise signal uh, ratio that, that you're, you're often speaking of. Um, yeah. Shout out to uh, Hayden Otto um, and his crew in Townsville. Uh, was that was yeah, that your first Dave time? In, that was my first time in Australia. Yes, and I mean that must have been a little surreal, right? So you're, if not the creator of Bitcoin Cash, you're certainly you know one of, one of the main uh, uh, fathers of it. Uh, was it kind of strange to to be there and to see people using something you know your baby that you put so much work into? What is, it was pretty cool to see all that adoption for sure. This is exactly why we build that stuff. And I think that's very positive uh, to, uh, you know, a lot of adoption in, in some places because you create a critical mass uh, where people have an incentive to accept it and to use it, right? Because if there is just one business in your town that accepts it, then you don't have a very strong incentive to actually use it. The other businesses don't have a very strong incentive to accept it either because it's not a, 
competitive advantage. But when a lot of people start doing that, then then you create you know you create this this attraction center you know for for the people that are interested in it. So uh, we actually saw several people within the BCH community have moved to to Townsville. Well, Aiden is an example. For instance, Aiden used to live in some other city, and he moved to Townsville uh, because of the adoption and some other people. Oh, you're, are, you're talking about Hayden. He used to live in another yeah. um, big, I think he yeah. lived in Brisbane or something. I lived in a big and, Australian And country. I know that other people, I don't want to, I know this is public for Hayden, so um, it, it's not a, yeah. it's not a problem, but I know that other people have done so or plan to do so as well. Um, and so this is going to create, you know, more users. And so this is also going to create more incentive for, for merchants. So once you, you know, manage to create some critical mass somewhere, you can get this virtual circle that is put in place. Um, and and that's, that's very cool to see that happening. It used to happen with Bitcoin in, in you right. know, more of the early days of Bitcoin. There was a Harnem in the Netherlands. It used to be called the Bitcoin Stad, which is mm -hmm. uh, the Bitcoin city in, in Dutch. Um, and... And there was a ton of merchant, but when the fee became very high in, in 2017, you know, uh, the whole stuff kind of died and it, it's very damageable, but it's very cool to see this kind of stuff happening again. And, uh, I, yeah, I think that's, that's very positive. And I heard, or I read rather, um, Anthony, uh, Zegers, uh, Mangarian, he, he made a really good point, uh, about Townsville and its significance to the developer community in particular. And uh, I'm probably going to butcher um, his his take, but it was a really, really good or interesting take. He said, uh, or he wrote something like, you know, we this is a nice microcosm. This is a nice uh, A B test. This is this is a a real life you know live ammunition test of Bitcoin Cash, and we can get great feedback from merchants that tell us, hey, this sucks, or this is great, or there's latency here. Yep. Why is there a problem there? Do you do, do you agree with uh, with his take? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to loop back to the to the culture stuff because I think this is something we are not very good at in in the BCH community. Like when someone builds something new, everybody is super excited about that new stuff. But in practice, what happens um, often for a lot of projects is that. Uh, when you build something new, it, it kind of works. It's kind of okay, but it kind of sucks as well. And the reason it kind of sucks is that people in the wild are going to use it differently from what you expected or some of their need you did not anticipate properly or, you know, maybe, you know, some of the ID that you had at the beginning were not the best IDs. And so what successful product end up doing is that, you know, they build something and it's okay. And they put it out there and they look at how people were are using it. And we used to do that a lot with Facebook. And I know that uh, many of the successful companies are doing that as well. So you put the product in the wild and you look at how people are using that product. You, you, you look at, you know, what works for them, what is great for them, but also where they are struggling, where they don't understand uh, how the product was intended to work or, you know, the kind of issue that they are encountering. And, um, and now that you have all that great feedback, you start iterating on the product and make it better and better and better. And, and eventually, if you can iterate fast enough, um, uh, you end up with the best product that there is and most people end up using it. And I think we have not been very good at understanding that this second part is actually the hard part. Like throwing some shit together and make it work is not that hard, uh, especially nowadays since there are, you know, huge uh, JavaScript library and or Python library and stuff like that, you know, throwing together some project by gluing some library together and, and writing some code on top of it. Uh, usually you can build a prototype in like a week or whatever for some products, but this is where the hard work starts. This is not, this is not, mm -hmm. Oh, cool. I beat that stuff. Right. And with Townsville and places like that, we have, this huge opportunity to look at how people are using that stuff in the wild and what is working great and what is not working great and, and improve that. And for instance, uh, there is a problem that I encountered twice when I was in Townsville is 
when the point of sale system that those people are using were offline for some reason, you know, maybe it was not connected to the Wi-Fi or whatever, right? Um, the stuff would still present me an invoice that I would pay, but you have two problems with that. The first one is that the stuff is not connected to the internet, so it, it never detects that I actually paid the invoice, mm. right? So, um, so that was the first problem. But the second problem is also the exchange rate could be stale, right? Because you'd get the exchange rate from the last time the terminal was online. And so you would end up having to, um, uh, you know, fix that up. So because I, I understand all that stuff works very well, I was always able to, uh, you know, deal with that issue and understand what was going on and help, you know, people, you know, making things work. But uh, this is the kind of stuff that you want to have fixed if this is going to be mainstream, because you, you cannot expect... Uh, you cannot expect mainstream adoption with this kind of issue lingering. But I'm sure there are many, many more because people are going to use that in many different situations than mm -hmm. the one you expected. You know, like when you are home and you have very reliable internet and all of that works, you test your point of sale system. You're like, okay, cool. You know, it works great. I can deploy that. But maybe you have a merchant in some location. The internet is a bit spotty and it doesn't work as well, right? So you... You have all kind of weird condition in the wild that people are going to use. And, and you got to make sure that you tune your product to every single one of them. Uh, let, let me give you an ID from Facebook that I, I know fairly well because I used to work there for several okay. years. Um, people, you can find several articles on the internet. People are looking at the Facebook app. And it's pretty big uh, for like as far as mobile app go. It, it's fairly big. And so there's disassemble it to try to find what the fuck is in there. And they find like huge amount of stuff. And people are very surprised because they're like, oh, come, there is like so much stuff in there where Facebook is not that complicated of an app. You, you post text mm -hmm. and picture and people can like and comment on them, you know, and, and you have a few other features, but it's not, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's not a good justification for an app to, to be like 100 meg or something like that, right? But what people don't realize is that there is a shit ton of customization for every single uh, kind of population out there, right? So if you are on the low end device, then the display, things are gonna be displayed differently because your screen is smaller. And if you're on a spotty internet, then, you know, things are gonna be different. And if you are, uh, you know, in a country that right left to right instead of right to left or the other way around, then the whole layout needs to change. Right. And if you want to import your contact, you know, so if you're in the US, maybe it's going to be Yahoo and Gmail and whatever, right? But if you are in Japan, it's going to be KDDI and, and SoftBank and, you know, whatever services that people use there. But if you're in Indonesia, it's something else. If you're in France, it's something else, right? And so there are like hundreds and hundreds of stuff that are going to change depending on what kind of user you are. And, and this is why the app is so freaking big. And all those stuff has been made and done because you have people that look, okay, or oh, are people using Facebook in Japan? I actually used to do that for a year. All people are using Facebook in Japan. What is working? What are they struggling with? Um, and, and oh, is it different from what people in the US use Facebook? Okay, so we need to customize this and that within the application for it to work well in Japan. And, and so... Uh, and so people do that and, and you have various team in many other uh, country that try to achieve the same thing. And so you end up with an app that has, you know, a ton of, of knob and toggles and stuff like that for various behavior of the app uh, that are going to be, you know, deploy or not in different places where people use, you know, different devices or have different culture or different expectation of how of, of things work. And this has been like iterated again and again and again for a year. And this is one of the big reasons why Facebook is so successful. And we need to, we need to learn from this kind of stuff. Like, uh, we need to stop adopting that process. When you put something out there, it's where the work starts. It's not, it's not done. It's where it started. And it's where you need to iterate and address like every single pain point one after the other. You start by the big one that affect the most people or that have the biggest consequences. And then you recurse and you, and you iterate and you do it again and again and again and again until the experience is flawless for 99.9% .9 of users. Wow. That is, uh, that is super insightful. And 
Um, when you were talking, I was thinking of uh, Roger uh, Veer's recent uh, video of him in Slovenia that uh, triggered so many <laughs> BTC maxis. Uh, he he was in a grocery store and he's he's scanning you know the self checkout uh, some uh, uh, some sweets and sodas or whatever and he he goes to pay with uh, with Bitcoin Cash using the Elipay uh, point of sale the the POS system and you know they, they could have just not posted this right they could have just edited it or you know whatever and I think it goes to uh, Rogers Rogers integrity that the video stays this way. Cause he, cause he has to know that he's being, you know, watched hyper, you know, more than anybody yep. else. And yep. so he sits there and he goes up, oh, this is taking a little bit longer than I'm used to. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a little. And then he began to explain, look, my phone is based in Tokyo and there's probably a SIM issue with a delay here in Slovenia or, you know, in other words, the, what what I loved about the video is I think what a lot of people miss. So they wanted to get all oh, Rogers a scammer, or, you know, or Bitcoin Cash. See, it's slow. It's not what it says it was going to be. No, guys. Like, you know, he could have. He he got zero credit for doing that. By the way, it's like, look, look here is what you just said. Like a Townsville like problem. You know, some like I don't know where it ranks necessarily on the hierarchy of of issues for, uh, for BCH devs. But I mean, that's certainly going to be something. So if you run around telling everybody that Bitcoin cash is faster and that's a selling point or a marketing point, and then you go to a Slovenian grocery store and my grandma, you know, swipes her, her visa card and she's already standing in the mall eating her pretzel while I'm fucking around with the Bitcoin cash, you know, app waiting another 35 seconds. Grandma's gonna look at me like I'm crazy. Like, wh why are you? Why are you using that crap again? Yep. So, yep, you, yep. so does does that kind of go to what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. So you you here you had a situation that is also not the main situation because he's using a phone that is roaming and probably doesn't have the best connection because of it, right? Because <laughs> the carrier, uh, you know, they prioritize their own user usually when you're roaming to get you know spotty internet, and so is in that situation and always, as we see when you are in that situation, well, sometimes the experience is not great. So now we need to work on making that kind of experience great. I don't know if it's the main one because by definition, people that are roaming are gonna sure. be less diverse than people that are not. But at some point, this kind of stuff needs to be addressed. And okay, let me let me get another example. Um, Go for when I, I, came to, I came to work in Japan at some point and uh, before I opened a bank account in Japan, so I had my bank account in France, it was in Euro, right? And so I buy some stuff on Amazon, um, um, you know, some, some stuff from Amazon Japan to be, to be delivered at my place. And, and so what happened is that uh, Amazon Japan detect that I'm using a credit card that is in Euro. So they're like, oh, you're using credit card in Euro. Do you want to be billed by, uh, you know, Amazon France in Euro instead of being billed by Amazon Japan and paying a uh, conversion fee and whatever? I'm like, yeah, sure, you know. And um, this must not be the most common use case, right? Because people are going abroad and buying stuff with a credit card mm -hmm. is probably not, you know, the number one issue on Amazon users. But they have gone to a point where they have addressed the main issue and then they get to this kind of issue and they know that it's added value for the customer, right? Because I'm going to, to buy an Amazon resort and some other stuff where I'm going to pay fee because I'm abroad with, you know, so I'm going to pay fee for the bank and stuff like that. And so they got to improve their service to the point where this kind of stuff exists and it's great. And it's one of the big reason also why Amazon is so successful. They have mm -hmm. been able to flesh out all this kind of use case and all this kind of issues. And, and we need, like, if we want to be successful, we need to be doing the same. And I, I think the, the perception in our community is that um, it's, it's not in the forefront enough, uh, this kind of stuff. The perception is that, you know, you have someone that built something and everybody's like, yeah, you know, like we have this new stuff that has been built and it's great, but it's, it's you know, where the hard work starts.